reschedule this. Um, then I think we'll call the meeting to order at seven oh six. Do we have any adjustments to the agenda? I have one person that I'd like to commend. I don't know where that can go. Anymore. You can do that board comment. Good. <laughs> um, is Jamie Jamie here? He's on his way. On his way. Okay. Should we wait for Jamie or um, go ahead and get started? He asked that you proceed without him. He'll be here soon. Okay. All right. Then we're on to the consent agenda to approve the minutes of Tuesday, November 21st, Thursday, October 19th, Tuesday, October 17th, and Tuesday, September 19th. Question on that. Didn't we already approve those those three? All except for November. Yeah. But there were, there was some that I missed in an email from Tammy to me to Christy. If Christy said she didn't get it. Huh. my snafu with the email, but we did approve everything through November. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. Well, why don't we approve November's then? And, uh... So moved. Seconded. Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Minutes are approved. Aye. <laughs> Thanks, Peggy. All right, public comment. Is there any public comment at this <coughs> time? Okay, board comments. Uh, okay, I, ha I had a parent approach me and say that they were very pleased with how a situation was resolved uh, and how their child was taken care of by Mr. Booty. Am I saying that right? Yeah. Okay, Mr. Booty. So I'd like to publicly commend Mr. Booty for looking out for the best interests of our students and making their day-to-day -day lives better. Awesome. Thank you. I'll let him know. Is there any other board comment? Moment. Okay. Celebration of learning. So this is a little bit different of a celebration of learning. I've decided what I would try to do is give you the opportunity to um, see a Hegarty lesson. Uh, but I, so I re recorded and spliced it all together. So it'll be in six minutes you'll see a Hegarty lesson, which is usually a 20 to 30 minute lesson. Um, so I have a video for you, has a little bit of Stephanie Russ talking. And then, um, yeah, why don't we just start and then I'll fill in a little bit after. So this is first grade, Stephanie Russ's room. Integrity is our phonemic awareness okay. curriculum. As teachers, we provide students with these daily lessons to work on phonemic awareness. Phonemic awareness is when students can hear and identify phonemes or separate sounds, like in the word cat, to say k, at. Students can also make phoneme and grapheme connections with the use of Hegarty in order to help with spelling. For example, the sound sh is a phoneme, but it's made up of the two letters s and h. So it's also a grapheme. This is because students need to be able to recognize that the sound sh is broken down into two letters s and h. This program has been absolutely fabulous. I just love seeing the immense growth, not in only my students doing decoding work, which is being able to read, but also to see their ability to spell and use sounds that they've learned to make words on their own. It is also tied nicely in with our foundations program, which is all about phonics, and the connections are really strong. Pause. New concept. We've talked about short and long. Last week we practiced all long with the roller coaster, remember? Uh -huh. So we'd say the name of the letter. So today it's slightly different. We're gonna, I don't know if she's gonna do the roller coaster or not, but if she chooses to, we're gonna make that sound and then we're gonna say the sound of it and we're gonna decide if you ready. Here we go. Listening ears on. Yeah. Here you go. We can use our roller coaster. Here it is, so roller coaster. Isolate that vowel sound. Ready? My word is shop. Shop. Short or long? Who knows the answer? Raise your hand. Who's another? Francis, short or long? Shut up. It's a short or long sound. It's the short sound for Good job. Great job. Good job. Let's try another one. Wait. 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 My word is hot. Ready? Hot. Ah. 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 Ah
long? Short. Ah, is that short or long? The short sound for the letter O. My word is cute. Cute. When segment or separate a word into the sound right here. This week, you will hear consonant digraphs in each word. They will ready. each make one sound. We can use this when we write and spell words. We can see, listen for each sound and then match those sounds to letters in print. Today, I will say a word. You will repeat the word and segment the yeah, words. Sam, are you sounds. ready? Can you count the sounds you hear? Ready? Beach. 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 We hear three sounds. Do it again. Teeth. this program in our kindergarten through second grades and I would say um, we did not used to use this and during COVID we found that the teachers were trying to teach kids how to read with masks on and they couldn't um, show their faces and that was hard and we found Hegarty because somebody had these videos pre-recorded and so we were able to use those videos and since then some people use the video and some people don't um, but it's been a COVID keeper so it's a lot of manipulation of words and uh, really works well with our foundations curriculum which is another curriculum we use to help teach reading so that is that. Is that one of the new smart screens that? That is not a new no. smart screen. <laughs> <laughs> That is an old no, but goody screen. screen. <laughs> okay. 
Is everything she's doing with her hands, is that like a standard so part the, of the... So the idea program? of gross motor activity helps like seal it in the brain is, is absolutely what that's about. So with foundations, they tap out. It's more fine motor, but you'll see them tapping out gross motor. And yeah, it's, it's that whole manipulation with your body helps it get into your brain. It's, And the kids know it. They know it. So and that's K it. through two? K through two. We use Haggerty. Yeah. That's interesting. You can take questions. Thank you. Um, I have had a couple of uh, teachers say that, you know, in the past, some of the school board members have gone in to observe classes and stuff. Is that an say option? Say when. I'll get okay. it set up. Let's do it. So. Yeah. You want to come in? Okay. All right. If you just want to walk around, if you want to see something specific, I can create a schedule. Okay. Or if you want to do it one campus, we could work together depending on what you want to see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay. okay. Well, thank you. All right. Um, reports to the board. Principals. That's us again. Um, I would highlight just a few things in our, our report for the elementary. Uh, happy to be acknowledged by the Secretary Boucher about our impressive efforts in PBIS. Um, secondly, I would say that, where was I going? There's something else I was going to highlight. Uh, <coughs> just that our, we did our, got our proficiency report cards out, so we worked hard on those. We are currently working on a math pilot. We're looking at the current math curriculum that we use and Bridges, which is the other curriculum used in our SU. Um, so we have some teachers that will be piloting a unit, will be visiting some schools that are currently using Bridges, then assessing whether we want to stay the course of what we're using or move to that other curriculum. Uh, the other pieces are all under our community outreach section uh, today. I sent out an all call and many people who didn't have to come to work came to work and helped us pack 150 boxes and bags that are going to be going out in addition to the generous donation from Chris and Pike to families who um, would like vacation food boxes. So for elementary we have about 150 families who did not opt out of getting the free food. Um, so we packed those all up today and Cabot donated cheese which we're very thankful for. Um, and we had some also other local donations from Hannaford's and Shaw's to help get this done. And it's all actually really through the community schools grant. So I'm um, happy to have that. And super thankful again for the people who came in who didn't have to come in today to help me do that because otherwise I was going to break child labor laws and use my children. Okay. <laughs> um, and then I also want to thank Gordini Glove. Both campuses applied. Uh, for the little glove project and we have got two huge boxes of beautiful gloves donated to us to use for eco and for any kids in need so um, it was a really generous donation of really nice gloves and we're happy to have them in Vermont and taking care of their elementary schools uh, and then today had we had school we would have gathered the whole elementary together for our winter fest sing-along which is really the um, the high school leading us through it so we're bumming that we didn't get to do that today but looking forward to it next year that's my highlights okay two things I'd like to add that didn't necessarily fit in the three categories of the principal's report um, I'd like to first offer a celebration when I was first interviewed for this position, the students, when interviewing me, asked me about my thoughts on school dances. So I knew from day one that was on their minds. Flash forward to just a few weeks ago, a group of students, when I say a group, I'm talking more than a dozen at any given time, began giving up their break time to actively plan a middle school dance. I'd like to especially thank uh, Nicola Moth, our uh, student counselor who helped guide them, who did some facilitation work, but by and large, uh, a group of nearly 20 students pulled off a dance where we had more than 80 middle school students show up and a whole bevy of chaperones, usually one of the toughest things to find. I point that out because I want us to keep in mind when our students are motivated and they have a goal and they're given the empowerment and the uh, resources, it's interesting what they can pull off. Um, it was very well attended. It was a good evening for all. The second thing I'd like to point out is really to plant a seed. 
I would like to invite you to take a look at our maker space at the next board meeting that we have on this campus. So in the next rotation in Bethel, I'd like you to see the progress we've made on that space. In the immediate future, we're going to have all the walls painted, equipment coming in, a lot of projects starting to um, come together. Currently on our campus, we have several uh, 3D printers that have been put together, thanks to Ray and his folks, uh, assisting Mr. Andy West. So again, planting the seed, the next time we're on the Bethel campus, I'd invite you to go take a look at that makerspace. Great. At the high school, I just have a few things. Um, one is our leadership team is, um, has been started this year, and uh, we visited the elementary uh, data team just recently and just learned a lot from them as far as how to run a good data team. You know, at the high school, it seems like when we talk about kids and their needs, we just sort of just sort of brush things, and we don't have a lot of data that we go by. And just after being in the elementary data team for 10 minutes, it was all data-driven, and it was really exciting, and I think our leadership team is ready to take the next step. So that was great, and I thank the data team for doing that. Next is uh, at the January Celebration of Learning, uh, we're going to talk about explorations, and that's something that I highlighted uh, in the report. And then lastly is as far as uh, community, expanding our community outreach. Uh, uh, myself and two students went to, um, to uh, Newton School, did a little recruiting. Um, there's a little uh, note from a parent in there. I thought the two students did a great job. We had FBUD coming on um, January, I forgot what day, 18th I think, uh, to come down and visit, do a school visit. Um, so we're continuing with our recruiting. Those are some of our highlights. Great. I should add one more thing. Um, it wasn't, I don't think we knew it when we had our principal's report out, but Francie Slater, our new farm to school coordinator, just um, applied for and we're receiving the early childhood capacity building grant for $19,000, $19,900. So super excited about that and her work to get that grant for us. So more and more to come with the farm to school. What's that going to allow us to do? It's really based on the early childhood, but I think it's, we'll know more soon. Okay. Um, I think it's just like, it's going to help us get started to build okay. our capacity so we can have more education with planting and growing our own food, things like that. Nice. Yeah. Great. Anybody have any questions for the principals? Uh, hey guys, I'm, I apologize. The policies, you got them in your full board packets. They didn't come in the local district packets. So I think we hold off. The full board didn't take action on these revisions and you didn't get them. So I apologize about that. They got sent out to the full board, but not the two district boards. So I'll get that fixed moving forward. So uh, we'll just take action in January. It's, they're all grammatical. Yeah. revisions there was nothing of substance to these particular three but um i think we should just hold off uh so there's that but act 127 update so um in regards to act 127 we have really good news in regards to our uh long-term average uh waiting pupil increase for rudd was um was really really positive so what you'll see is um is when we get ready to go to your tax <coughs> sheet, in FY24, you had 566.94 pupils. Based on the new algorithm, that number would have jumped for this current budget year to the current FY24 to 1,030 and 68. That's really good. And what's even better is, is that the long-term uh, waiting number for FY25 has jumped to 1,096 in 93 and so you say why is that the biggest jump from last year to this year um, I just want to be able to see the board I'm sorry is um, mostly uh, our free and reduced lunch numbers across many of our districts has increased and that free and reduced lunch number does increase the per pupil count and this new learn long-term weighted average um, and so what we're seeing right now is that our middle school 
is over 60% for free and reduced lunch population now, and our high school is even over 60% in free and reduced lunch population now, which I think has always been where we are. And so you may say, why all of a sudden have the numbers increased when we got school-wide meals and things of that nature? It is because the agency now is using Medicaid data and direct cert data that they have access to to be able to generate those um, free and reduced lunch percentages. It's not just relying on the forms being filled out now. And what you tended to see is before our elementary numbers were sometimes upper 50s to might hit 60, but as we get to middle school and get to high school, those numbers would decrease because families would just not fill them out as much. And so now with being able for them to get that data now through other ways, not just the free and reduced lunch form, I think we've seen those percentages actually reflect um, a much better reflection on, you know, our students and, and, and who we're educating. And so what they've done now in the cost equity formula is, is recognize that those districts who have higher uh, numbers of free and reduced lunch should have greater tax capacity to serve those students. And so what you're going to see is, as we get to the budget and things, um, is that that is helping us quite a bit um, for this current budget cycle. Um, and so that's the Act 127 update in regards locally here at the district. I would tell you that one of the things I continue to be concerned about in regards to Act 127 continues to be what they projected was a significant drop, drop in the yield, which is the number we're using right now in your tax sheet. Uh, the other thing, and I, my sense is that that drop in yield will stay. I don't see that rebounding. The Ed Fund is going to run a deficit this year. Um, they're going to have to find some additional revenue funds to put it in. And you say to me, why, Jamie, is because Act 127 is written in a way that if your per pupil spending from FY24 and FY25 stays under 10% increase, your tax rate's capped at 5% as a town. Um, and so if, well, I was just at a district where if we didn't change anything in our budget, we needed to actually increase locally. Their tax rate should have went up 6.5%. But if it's capped, that 1.5% has to come from somewhere. Right, And so if you multiply that across the state of all these different districts, that's going to result in an Ed Fund shortfall. And so how might they make up that difference? Well, they have a few ways they could make up that difference. One, they could look at um, regressive taxes to make up the difference. Uh, so taxing soda, I'll just say, or something, right? And putting that money in the Ed Fund. They could do that. Uh, they could increase their projected uh, non-homestead tax rate, which right now is less than six cents. So $60 on a $100,000 home. Um, that's what they're projecting right now when the tax letter came out. Uh, or they could look at, are there ways to use some general fund surpluses to help soften the blow to the Ed Fund while they're getting Act 127 up to speed? Uh, some folks have said to me, where did this 5% tax cap come from? You know, my sense is, remember, this bill was not um, actually adopted last year. This was adopted two years ago. They gave a whole year for this to come into play. Uh, it was really, my sense is, is to soften the blow to districts who are actually losing pupils. So there are some districts across the state that this new weighting, weighted average actually is resulting in their pupil count going down or or it went up not enough to make a difference um, in regards to knowing the, the trajectory of the drop of the yield. So um, that is why they capped it at 5% to try to allow those districts to get their spending in order over five years to make it so that they had a more sustainable tax rate moving forward. And I think that's how they gained support for the bill um, across the state. You know, when they were rolling Act 127 out, all they wanted to talk about were the weights. There wasn't a lot of talk about what it might actually do in regards to the yield or how they were going to generate the difference in funds. Um, and so, you know, I do expect there to be some type of action taken on 127 this legislative session. I just don't know what that will be. So you wouldn't anticipate them getting more revenue by lowering the yield further from what the projection is? 
No, my sense is that that was the that they went that they realized there was a problem and they went in with a really low yield. I'm not gaining any sense that that yield's going to even drop further. What I think they're going to look at is talking about tax caps, like this five percent. Like, why? How did we even come up with five percent? Is that arbitrary, right? Like, yeah. I think they're going to look at that. I think they're going to look at like how do they look at increasing other revenues to the Ed Fund. I don't foresee right now that the yield's going to drop even more. And I think part of when the governor's talking about eighteen and a half percent tax rate, and I think he is trying to raise concerns around that there that this bill and that there are I don't know if he even fully understood it originally. I think now he is realizing that there's an ed fund shortfall and that has to be made up somewhere and looking at like how are we gonna navigate that. But if it drops further, don't call me a liar. I'm just not hearing yeah, anything on my end saying that the yield's going to drop even more than what they're projecting. Okay. I mean, it was a huge drop. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, like, the, the you know, students go up and yield drops. So. Yeah. It, it's a wash. Yeah. Yeah. Well, for us, it's a game. For us, it's yeah. a game. In <laughs> other districts, it yeah. has not been yeah. a game. But... But, I mean, that's the way it's got to be. Yeah, absolutely correct. Um, okay, any other questions on, on that? And we're going to go into that all again here when we do the budget and the tax sheet. But I just want to give kind of an overview of the, the Act 127. I also, uh, just while we're here, wanted to put a huge shout-out um, to our road crews, um, and first responders across the ASU. I had a few districts yesterday that even though we closed at 1130 that we were dealing with water over roads and some fire departments and things had to help us out um, just to make certain kids got home safely. So a huge shout out to them. And then two, just the staff. I was in a, a tuition budget meeting, which was really a positive thing with uh, Principal Thomas until about 940 and walked out of Royalton School and recognized, um, well, no, I had put a call in to Tumbridge because I had heard that the, the roads were a uh, mess that morning and um, then also got notified by their road crew that that first branch was very high and rising quickly. And so I didn't make the call to have an early release until about 9.55, and we were able to get all of our students fed on buses and run routes safely within 90 minutes. And so I, it's just a huge shout out to our staff, like our admin assistants, our food service, the bus company uh, was able to get their drivers here so that we could roll routes by 11.30. So it just, it had to come together quickly and it was just, it felt good to know we could pull it off that quick. I know it was an impact to our families, but we were able to get kids home safely. And in, in you know, <coughs> essentially it was impacting all of our districts because like we have kids that got to get up that first branch corridor on 110. So yeah. it wasn't just first branch. It was getting our high school kids home. And so anyways, just a shout out to everyone involved and just how communicative. I mean, I've been on the phone with the, the Bethel uh, road foreman at least four times in the last, you know, day. Um, and just very communicative and just very appreciative of it. Yeah, great. Okay. Um, uh, Tara? Is, Tara's, right Tara's with Sharon, yeah. which is where I ran yeah. from. And they were, my senses will see her a little later. <laughs> but they still had some stuff to work through. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, and the policy committee didn't happen yet, so. Yep. Um, and then we have these three policies, and sorry that they didn't get included. Yep. All right. Um, then we're on to the budget. Oh, one thing I could add for Terry, in case she didn't come, is we did get um, first draft audits um, e either this morning or yesterday afternoon, so that's good. Okay. Everything's good there, and we'll have true trial fund balances for in January. So. Okay. Um, do we want to rearrange the discussion items and do the other two before? Yeah, let's do that. Yep. Yeah, so EI summer project updates. Do you want to take this, Chris, or? Um, 
Yeah, I mean, or you can fill in wherever. We we had our facility meeting um, this, this morning. morning. That's right. I was thinking it was yesterday, but yeah, it was this morning. <laughs> it's been a long. The last two days have blended yeah. together. No, I hear you. I, I called a principal Aaron, and they were yeah. like, you don't have a principal Aaron. It's just Aaron, so I'm with so, you. Um, yeah, so um, we talked about the, uh, the the work that had been going on. So um, they are in, <clears throat> uh, here on the Bethel campus, they are in what they call um, finishing up their work, working on punch list um, type pieces. Um, so for a, a couple of more weeks, we will see you know, dumpsters and things that are being picked up. There'll be some troubleshooting going on. They'll have an individual that will be in and out, just kind of doing some of the fine tuning of the system um, to make sure everything is, is working as efficiently as possible. Um, the f full integration with test with the wood chip boiler will be completed by the end of the month. I can't remember what exact date he had said, um, shortly after Christmas. Um, so, and they did apologize for the inconvenience of uh, one cold, um, really cold day here on campus when we didn't have any heat. So, um, so it sounded like those are coming pretty well. It sounded like that the lighting, they were going to double check, but it sounded like the lighting was just about 100% completed. Um, again, some, some uh, tie-in type pieces that they have left. Um, it was brought up today in regards to some of the lighting in the gymnasium about protection around the lighting um, from balls and other projectiles. So they were going to look into, uh, I, I guess, uh, from what we understand is due to the, um, due to te the technology of the lighting and, and how they dim is the cages kind of get in the way of that technology. Um, but the lighting themselves are more durable than, than the typical fluorescent lighting. Um, so they they were he was going to uh, Eric was going to look into um, the potential of a protection cover for certain problematic areas of the school and he was going to get back to us. Um, they did say that they would warranty their work for the period of the trial. So um, if things are going to break. Do it now. So we can <laughs> we'll test it out now. Um, so it sounded like everything was pretty good and you know everything on the Royalton campus has been wrapped up when it came to the lighting. Um, so I think we're we're in pretty pretty good shape there. Now that it's wrapped up at our campus, is that um, the container going to be taken care of, or is that it gonna... sounded like it? I, okay, it, you know, I was just going to email stuff out him here and yeah. there, and I think they're I think they're waiting for the um, contractor coming to pick up those. Yeah, sorts. the other night at the concert, I, I was just like the parking was unbelievable, and I thought, well, there's <laughs> six or eight there from the container that yeah. people aren't able to park. Uh, I'll email them just to remind him, but I'll do, I'll do that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. I I, I had um, made a comment this morning to them that you know at least as being a basketball coach and in and out quite often and having the late uh, practices often is you know they seem very professional. They're in here. You know they're kind of working around the kids in the practices in their hallways and and it looks like everything has been cleaned up before the morning. So it's not like you come in and you're like oh you know we get bits and pieces all over the place and and the janitorial staff also said that that they were very happy with the um, how they picked up after themselves so and at least that was over here I don't know how no, how, it was, how it was over there yeah. as well but yeah yeah good professionals one piece? sure only because it's changed since we met this morning uh, initially we were scheduled to have a handover tomorrow where we, some of us would be walked through uh, the boiler set up, emergency shut off, start, things like that. That's now been rescheduled until January 3rd. It's the only thing that's changed since our meeting. I just got to say the lights out. So, first time I have seen the lights out front. Yeah, it's a lot. Wow, what a difference. It's a huge difference. Yeah, actually, in the library here, I'm, I'm noticing a big difference too. The, the only, I guess the only, when we talked about that today about how, how nice the lighting and it, it, I think it has a more welcoming evening. Um, but the, the downside to that sometimes is if you show up for like say the 6.30 practice or 6 o'clock practice is if nobody's been in that area in a period of time, it's all dark. Mm -hmm. So it almost looks like nobody's at the gym because the, one of the first nights I had a 6 o'clock practice, there was a bunch of parents that waiting in the parking lot like, can we even get in? I'm like, yeah, it should be able to get right in. And the door was open. It was just, it looked like there was nothing because um, they, they go off after a period of time. So.
watch you and start talking. Okay. Um, does anybody have any questions on the summer project work? It sounds like it's wrapping up and, and done a good job. So it's good. I guess then we can move on to talk about the uh, next potential projects. <coughs> the capital improvement projects and possible bond vote in November update. Yeah, so we again um, went through that today, um, kind of putting together our timeline. Um, I know originally we were talking about um, kicking it off this month, but it, we're we're going to do it next month. Um, so we we talked about uh, that we were going to well, it's all going to go under one bond vote, but at least be broken out into different pieces so that we can sure. share um, what the cost of each one of these pieces would be. Um, so there's the uh, the piece of the um, the performing arts center itself. There's going to be the piece that we talked about some of the upgrades that would have to be done to the existing gymnasium, um, some sound, acoustics, and, and lighting, and some safety um, concerns that we had in the old gymnasium. Um, so that'll be its own line, line item. Um, we talked about the moving forward with the um, ventilation uh, pieces in the library and the cafeteria. So those will be their own light item. And then the, um, uh, what we're calling the, the entrance way or safety and security entrance ports, um, both at Bethel and Royalton. And we also threw in a little bit today, just talking about, we didn't want to completely fix everything, but uh, you know, there's a couple other entrances here on the Bethel campus that need to be looked at. The, the door here at the library and, and the door on the back end of the school and the gymnasium that, that have gotten to the point of no return. So um, just kind of putting those in there while we like had a contractor. They're unsecure kind of? There's thing. a lot of, th yeah, there's, <laughs> there's holes, they're, they're rusty, they're. That's unsecure. Um, yeah, so. Yeah. Um, so so the idea is that the next meeting, um, Eric will be here to present uh, kind of, you know, an overall picture of what this project would look like and all the details and then kind of a, an umbrella cost of of what we think this will call, uh, be, um, and then we at that time hope to have uh, numbers that we can present of of bond type numbers. And um, at that time, we just kind of want uh, any questions that the board may have in regards to the project, um, and uh, anything that does come up that we plan on in the February meeting to address those questions, and then hope to have a, a yay or no in February on moving forward with the project or not. Um, and, and then the rest of the timeline we decided to put together, but I guess it all depends on if we move forward with it or not. So, um, you know, the end goal is November of next year, um, and there'll be a bunch of other um, milestones throughout, throughout the por portion of it, so. All right, thanks, thanks, Chris. Okay. Um, I guess now we're on to the budget. Unless anybody has any further questions on the capital improvement projects. So I can start with the budget. Principals can fill in. Um, and so, you know, I would start with it. It. This is one of the larger increases in budget, certainly, that I've brought forward to you since I've been your superintendent. Um, I would also say, you know, last month when we were talking about personnel alone, we were at about 8% increase. And so I hope that this sticker shocks that too much. We have not changed any of the FTE increases from last month of what we showed you. What the differences are now is you have all your line items. Um, you have your SU assessments that are in here. These SU assessments are based on the budget that we proposed for the SU board to possibly approve last night. And that budget got, um, that meeting got canceled. We'll take that up on January 3rd. Um, I just want the board to know that we did remove the data coordinator out of that um, SU budget proposal. So the SU budget that you saw in November is going to be down to what we're asking you to get center to approve in January. 
Um, and then your SU assessments, of course, adjust every year based on the percentages. And Tara did share those out with the full board. And by the full board, you all get them, whether you're on the board or not. When we send stuff out, just so all the board, SU board members know, all your board, the whole 32 board members get that information. Um, and so um, I just want you to know that those are based on that, that budget. Um, otherwise, what we did is we made some adjustments based on what we're seeing actual trend. Um, you're going to see underneath um, 641, I wanted to point out, under books and periodicals, you'll see a $22,000 increase. This is on page 1 to 10. That is to support the purchase of bridges materials. You may say, what are bridges materials? That would be for us to purchase math materials um, at the elementary level um, to support our teachers in grades K through 5. You already have them in pre-K. Um, do you want to go into it further? Yeah, so I mentioned it a little bit earlier in my principal's report. So it's depending, we're doing the pilot to see what the program we go to. Regardless, uh, whether we stay within vision or go to Bridges, we have to, we have to up our, our contract. It's going to cost money. So that's the, that's the cushion, just depending so on which direction you go in. I was curious, and I meant to ask during the principal's report, I forgot. Um, I mean, we just went to Envision probably two years ago. Three. Probably Three. feels that way for people on the Royalton campus, yes. Yeah, right. Um, you know, they've done it in Bethel, but we just switched. Well, we, we're using a couple programs in Royalton when I showed up there. Um, so we decided to get all on the same page. So um, we had to have contract, and it's up. So it's, it's, I think it's a good time for us to decide if this is really the same track we want to stay on or if it's better to do what the, our sister schools are doing because then we get to have training with them as well. So uh, it's, it's all in the teacher's hands. I have teachers from upper elementary and lower elementary who are going to go visit, and um, I'm going to let them make the decision about which direction we're going in. So is there still kind of a decision to be made about whether we're going to do a pilot? We'll know the beginning of February. No, the pilot's happening. We'll know which direction we're going at the beginning of February. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, so just so the board knows, um, this is just an example of when I came in at the SU, I said that you have to have aligned curricular materials. I didn't say they had to be aligned across the whole SU. Um, and so your district and Sharon are using Envisions materials that we purchased via ESSER funds. The other districts chose to go to Bridges at that time. Um, and we've been tracking data across those districts. Um, in general, it's looking like Bridges makes a lot of sense for us um, across the SU. Um, in addition, we've been implementing some number corner from Bridges at Rudd already uh, to try to just strengthen number sense. So. We do use Bridges intervention as well. And you use Bridges intervention as well, too. Okay. But, but we do try to have it be the instructional materials are not the curriculum. We try to have it still be a district decision. Um, we don't say you have to use it. So as far as that line item, though, it sounds like we'll be spending it on one or the other kind of correct. Well. No matter what, because we have to sign a contract with somebody. Yeah. And when you sign a contract, is it just like here's thirty thousand dollars? We get your stuff for five years, or is it? It's a little bit more than that, yeah. <laughs> I meant like training. Yeah. They do yeah. give support. It was a thirty thousand dollars increase. Yeah. Right. yeah. No, there's there's a lot of support. I think that also comes with that. Okay. Um, but I, I more meant is it a one-time cost or is it an ongoing cost? It's a one-time cost, and then we'll have to budget for it. I mean, it's a one-time cost up front. We'll need to budget for it again when we want to get the next version. Right. Okay. So not every year, but every, every three to third. five. Every three to five. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, and why it looks like it's the first time you bought it is because I leveraged Esther to get aligned math materials across the SU. Uh, so wanted, I wanted to point that out. Um, you'll note you know, health insurance is a big jump across each one of your departments. Um, those are ba 
Tara builds those budgets on who your current staffing is and what they've chosen for health plans. So sometimes you'll see health insurance jump even higher than 16.4% because we had budgeted for someone last year that might just had like a single plan or just a you know two person plan and we hire someone that had a family. Or you may see it go the other way. You'll say, how did it health insurance go up 16.4%, but now in a certain area it's down? Well, it could be that the teacher we have now is single and doesn't have a family, and so we're budgeting as if they're going to be single because that's what they've said to us. If we don't know who the teacher is going to be, meaning we haven't hired them or we're looking, we budget for a family. Well, just uh, going based on, like last year, it was basically $1.2 million for all the health insurance. And so doing that time, 16% is another $188,000. So. One increase. <laughs> that, that, that's a chunk. Uh, the other thing I wanted to just remind you, so what this budget still includes for additional staffing is another student support coordinator. So you have three currently right now. You have one at Bethel Elementary, essentially, one at the middle school, one at the high school. This would give you a, the fourth student support coordinator to support the Royalton Campus Elementary School. It's been very hard to share a student support camp coordinator across the two campuses. So that's why we're budgeting that. So that's an addition in this budget. The other FT you're, you're seeing is going to be in tech ed. You'll notice a big jump on that on page 3 of 10 because we're budgeting for that second tech ed teacher so that we have a tech ed teacher on the Royalton campus full time and a tech ed teacher at the middle school campus full time. Right now we have one tech ed teacher that goes across the two campuses. Starts here in the morning and then goes over to the high school in the afternoon. So that was an addition. The other FTE addition that you're seeing in this budget um, is in the guidance area. We're still budgeting for a guidance administrative assistant to support the guidance counselor. Um, and Principal Thomas brought that to you. Uh, that job description back in October. So that is still in here. And you will find that. Under the administration. Yes, it's under admin. Thank you, Andrew. Um, and so that position would be, it's going to be student facing, family facing. Certainly support the admin, the guidance counselor with students in regards to just all the stuff that goes behind the scenes around supporting students for college. Um, you know, that is a position we had that we had cut about three years ago, just to remind the board when we were in a really difficult place of trying to uh, come up with a budget that we felt voters could support while trying to also navigate some deficit. Also, though, the high school has grown significantly. Um, you know, we, we are looking now at cohorts well over 50, and when we get to the revenue side, I have really good news in regards to how many we're budgeting right now for tuition students in revenue versus how many act it's looking like we're going to actually have next year based on current um, students in our building. And I will say that we've seen really good growth at our high school, um, like over 50 tuition students. That's great. Um, where we're only even carrying 35. So I'm just saying, as the high school is growing, I think it shines more of a light of needed support around that office. That is not where we were three years ago. Um, so just to know that that's in there. Would it be possible to code that under guidance since it's... Yeah, we, I, let me talk to Tara about why not just move that into the guidance department. That's where I went to look for it. You'll see that the underneath uh, on page 7 of 10, under 2190 student support, you'll see that increase of the 1.0 for the student support coordinator at the bottom of the page that I was talking to you about. I just wanted you to point that out where that was. Oh, the, this budget does also support, just to remind you, um, of us having two interventionists. Right now, 
at the middle school, you have um, a reading interventionist, and we use um, some paraprofessional support to support in mathematics. This would be us looking to hire a licensed um, teacher to do math intervention. So we would have a 1.0 reading interventionist here at the middle school and a 1.0 math interventionist here at the, at the middle school. Sorry, where was that again? That's in, um, it's, you'll find that underneath intervention. Is that under remedial? Yeah. Okay. So that's this five. So it's an increase of 0. 0.4. Because it's how we had the high school FTE budgeted prior. It's not going to take any FTE away from it. It only shows a 0. 0.4, but it's going to equate to a 1.0 here. Okay. Um, the other thing, you will see your transportation assessment went up some. Other districts we've saved, and this district we didn't, um, based on just in our prior bus contracts that we were not we were not being assessed or billed at a certain cost per bus. It was kind of like they just gave us a figure for each district. Now we're paying per bus. Um, so I was just at a district where they saved thirty thousand. You are up. But I can tell you it's exactly what the you pay for the buses you have on the road. Um, and so I, it is up some, but I would tell you that in general our service has been good and, and their work with us. And, and I know that we're paying for the buses we have. And we have those buses. So Makes a difference. It does, yeah. So anyways, I can, I can tell you the cost per day, and that's what this is built on. Um, but I did want to point that that's up. The other thing you'll see in your budget that we've been carrying in the community schools grant is um, we budgeted for Tri Valley Transit in here, which is just over thirty thousand. Um, and you may say, Jamie, like, why are we budgeting for that locally? I've got all the Tri Valley routes are really serving our high school and middle school uh, around just supporting us in regards to getting our tuition receiving students back home in the evenings and also doing some crosstown runs in the middle of the day, doing crosstown runs uh, in the evening. It really is a RUD service that kids at the secondary level may use, but they're really our tuition receiving students. Um, so you'll see that in here, because I, I cannot care, the community school grants going away. I do think it is a worthwhile um, investment to keep offering that transportation. It is um, certainly, uh, it cost us less than if we were going to contract through our bus provider. Two, I will tell you that we def I definitely see tuition students getting off of those buses um, and getting on them in the afternoon at your high school. And the, I mean, really, t you know, not even two students utilizing that pay that each year. So I think the more, and I think it helps us with marketing, I think the more that we can continue to do that, I do think all those things contribute to why we have you know, over 50 students in our high school now coming to us. So I think it's a worthwhile investment. Um, but I wanted to point that out that that's in there. Um, maybe it's, I did have a question about the tech center transportation. Um, since that's up $33,000 and in the revenue page, there's the vocational transportation, which I thought was basically offsetting that but it's not up in the revenue. Well, she included Tri-Valley Transit underneath your tech center oh, transportation. Okay. I, see, I see, so that's, what, that's just what you were talking about. Okay. That's just what I was just talking about. Right. Also know um, that revenue line for tech center is based on a two-year average. Right, okay. Um, and for example, right now we don't have students going Currently, we still are budgeting for this next year, just so you know, but like right now, we don't have students currently doing pre-tech at the Randolph, and so we're not running a midday bus to Randolph right now. So you're actually going to see a savings on, like, at the end of this year. We won't spend as much in that line as we're projecting. We're continuing to budget for if we ran that run. 
but it's on actual actuals when they say to you, Tara, this is how much we're going to reimburse you. It's based on how much we actually pay. Um, it would, just as another coding thing, it might be better to have the Tri Valley Transit in one of the other lines just because it's not I agree. In the I didn't know that that's the but yeah. I just wanted to point out to you that we were adding it. Having those correspond. So, I mean, we did add some FTE. So really for the board, you know, your overall budget's up 9.87%. We can go to the revenue and tax sheet. Just note to the board that, you know, that when you start to talk about where you want your overall budget to be, know there were definitely some things added to this budget, right? Meaning personnel. Yeah, that was about 200,000 of the 1.2. Um, one question I had was about the men section on page, what page would it be? Page eight or nine, sorry, page nine. There's uh, contracted services is $20,000 up, and other professional services is eighteen five. So, what are those? This is uh, 341 and 349 on page 129. Nine. Yeah, the office of the principal, 2410, but it's on the previous page, so it's at the top of page 9, or in the middle of page 9. I believe we will have to ask Tara. We've been using some contracted service to support our students um, in some intensive pathway programming for some high school students that we've had some concerns around um, dropout. And so we have been using some contracted service providers to support students virtually in regards to that. My okay. sense is that might be where that increase is coming from, but that's a question you have to ask her. She and that adjusted falls that. under the office of the principal? Remember? Well, it would be a contracted service. Be a contracted yeah. service. So we'd have to ask her. Okay. We did talk about adding that. So, But that would be a good question for her. I see that it's ba that, that those two funds were spent from an FY23 and we've been doing some of that contracted service. So my sense is that's why she adjusted that, but we need to ask her. Okay. There haven't been other services we've been doing outside of that. So my sense is that that's where that's coming from. Jeff, is that making sense to you? Yeah, yeah I think. Um, one other thing I would point out um, as another difference for that adds a lot is that in previous years we've had the balance carryover from the on the revenue page, which is when we take our surplus and put it into the budget to lower the tax rate, and that's been two hundred thousand dollars the last couple of years and we're not we don't have anything budgeted for that this year so that is two hundred thousand dollars of the 1.2 1 1.27 that's the difference which I would tell you we have I mean we did increase our tax capacity right so at the end of this when I get to the tax sheet I'll tell you that we're looking at taxes going down which I know sounds crazy yeah, but we, I mean, this, we are a district where act 127 was supposed to build tax capacity. Um, so that's why. Yeah. Why don't, why don't we look at the tax sheet? Yeah. I think it's, and so that's why I'm not, I would not suggest you go putting revenue yeah. in particularly when we're talking about buildings. cutting taxes well, yeah. and doing and big build, major building build things. things. Yeah. So, um, 
What is the projected carryover that <clears throat> that we will have in the budget? We're not projecting that we're budgeting any revenue carryover. That we're going to ask that you look to ask the taxpayers to put that money away in reserves. Okay. But what is that number? Do we? Do Tara we will be able to tell you a... right off the top of our head. <clears throat> I can't tell you that number off the top of my head. It was still pretty. It's you know, big. It's I mean, it was not as conservative, big as conservative. Three hundred, three hundred and fifty. My sense is it's be maybe even a little more than that, Chris. For one, we're carrying thirty-five pupils as a revenue, and you know, if we're over fifty, twenty times seventeen five right there. The last few years is that starts to add up to some surplus. <clears throat> that is one of the things you, we can adjust on your revenue page. I don't know if I want to, we have gotten in trouble in the past of over projecting, not in the last few years, but at one point I felt like we were over projecting revenue around tuition. Um, so I'd okay, like to yeah. always stay conservative on that. So like if we're projecting that we're gonna have, you know, I, right now we're looking at over 60 kids in the revenue pool, which is good. Um, you know, I would like to always at least have a 10 to 15 student buffer because you don't get to just make that up. Am I making sense, Chris, what I'm saying, or the board? Like, I can't make things to get revenue. We don't build stuff. So I would rather always under budget revenue and, and have it come out on the positive end than over budget because then you're just chasing your tail trying to find up that budget gap. During the year, I can go to the principals and say, well, guess what? That money that you had set aside for X, we're going to have to tighten our butts, our belts and not do X. <laughs> oh, I can't talk tonight. <laughs> Apologize. At least I haven't called any of you Aaron yet. <clears throat> so based on the current budget, are there, and if so, what, what would be the cost on some things that we may see funding mechanisms go away here in the next two or three years. So if, if there's something that we're projecting, I don't know, if it's $40,000 that we may have to come up with half here going forward or whatever. Is there anything in this budget right now? No, because, you know, I'm not using any Medicaid funds in your local budget as a revenue. So let's go over the revenue page. Right? That's where it would happen, Chris. And so on your page one of one of your revenue budget, you'll see at the top, we're not carrying any balance carryover, which is what you're just asking. Mm -hmm. We've been using 200,000 each of the years. We're, we're budgeting them this year. Um, you'll see that Tara's still using 35 students at 18.5 for your tuition revenue. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you that I know that our number is more like 60 currently. Yep. Um, she's using your tuition at pre-K. She upped that actually, those are based on your actuals right now. We hadn't done your actuals yet for the middle and high school to the last two days. I don't want to use all of them though, unless you tell me we have to. What I mean is if we have 60, I would prefer that we don't budget all 60 because kids can change their minds or something can happen and then we're, we're trying to make up that difference. So those are your local revenues. The, um, the other thing to know um, as you go down Chris, one of those areas where I would tell you that I always get concerned is at the, uh, if you look, we haven't been budgeting at Medicaid reimbursement. Uh -huh. We do generate some Medicaid funds, and we, and, but in the, I get concerned. That number can fluctuate based on parents filling out the paperwork for Medicaid reimbursement. Um, it can also fluctuate just on our Medicaid numbers. That is an area if we were if we were looking for revenue, we could budget some money there. And you'd say to me, Jimmy, what would you budget Medicaid toward? I could budget Medicaid funds for you, Chris, toward um, your nurses, toward an SAP counselor. Right now you have an SAP counselor. I do cover it in a different grant fund at the SU level called MAC funding. It's different than Medicaid, but it's a similar pot of money. Um, and so just know that if you said to me like what's something that could be risky it's medicaid can be a bit risky because that number can fluctuate <laughs> um you know our in general our you'll see that your grants went up and these are the grants that come into the supervisory union for title funds that we're increasing that based on your free and reduced lunch population number we have to title and rank 
in regards to Title I and the funding that we provide schools and based on just your, your interventionist actuals. That's why that number went up, Chris, but I don't see that number changing for RSU. It's been really stable in regards to Title funding. And the good news is our free and reduced lunch across the SU has actually gone up. Um, so there, I don't see them. I was worried about this two years ago because our numbers were dropping, but now that they've got, that they're using actual data, not just the free and reduced lunch form, I'm feeling much better about that. So that's where your total other grants is, it's, it's title. And then your tech center, um, that's, that's really based on the students that are going to the tech center. That's where that number comes from and that difference in reimbursement. So we're not using anything um, in your revenue side that I feel not good about. And what I would say is that we just are really careful that we're not, you know, I don't want us to overstate um, tuition revenues because the, they can be tricky. And I just want to make certain that that the number of students, you know, maybe we bump that up to 40, but I don't want to go much more than that. Let's make certain. Yeah, and I think you know, purposely budget for surpluses, but certainly better to have surpluses than not, particularly when, like, we benefited from the... Um, yes, sir. No, the uh, the long term. Oh, Act average. 127, yeah. absolutely. And but we don't know what the yield's going to do next year, as far as like if they have a big budget deficit and that thing close it next Correct. year. Correct. So yeah. And then under the long term debt piece, what what is the long term debt that we're carrying? So the, the very last. Um, it's the gym. Um, bond. That's the Royal Open Gym. Yeah. That that that's it. I think so at this point. I think it's only got like five years left or something like Do that. Do we know what that balance is? Or? Uh, we can look at last year's audit, or it'll tell us in this year's audit when we get it. But um, okay, it's it's not too many more years. Okay, I think it's till 2028. Or no, that's yeah. I think it might be till 2028. Right. Um, but I need to need to double check. It makes sense because it's going down. Which they tend to—I mean—they tend to go down toward the end. I can ask that question on Tara too, Chris, and I ever get it to you. I ever email the whole board. Yeah, trying to pull it quickly out of the audit might not be. A <laughs> and then I had a couple just random questions. <clears throat> so, uh, looking through the history of our. Um, school meeting we usually put a, a piece in there that kind of shows the equalized pupil history and I know we're not there anymore but you know trying to at least show the voters that um, what our daily attendance is I guess at the school is I know things have changed but how how can we put that together this year so we it sounds like we have growth right so how, how can we put that before the voters you know I think we can show do ADM like average daily yeah. membership. okay so I know we've, you know, we've kind of changed and from what we have been using. And then, and then I noticed the common level of appraisal, we didn't adjust any common level of appraisal. I don't have this yet. Okay. We don't get that until January. Yeah. Um, so have people looked at the tax sheet? Yeah. So just to walk, especially new board members, and please reach out to Tara too, and she'll sit down with you. But you know what we do is we take our expenditures, we decrease that by our offsetting revenue, which is the revenue page we just showed. That gets us an Act 68 education spending of 13, uh, 13 million, 105,548. That then gets divided through by your long-term weighted average daily membership. And Tara put the equalized pupils to the right, like Chris was just talking, so you can just see, mm -hmm. like, why does that long-term average daily member cost per pupil spending go down so much? It goes down because we, use, we used to use a factor of 566.94. Now it's 1,096.93. All right, and that gets us at 11,947.48, which gets us to an equalized residential tax rate 
of uh, 12640. Then you have to go and contribute the yield. And so we, or the yield came in before that, I think. Actually, I apologize. Uh, which get you to 1.2640. So you take that final FY25 equalized tax rate, which is 1.2640. Just so you know, you'll see that that is the same number both in Bethel and Royalton. That equalized tax rate's always the same in a unified district. When your tax rates changes, is because now you have to factor in the CLA, which for board members, that's the common level of appraisal. And so when that common level of appraisal is under 100%, then the tax rate's going to increase based on the CLA. How do they come up with the CLA? They come up with the CLA based on what property values are selling at versus what they had been previously assessed at, right? And so if property values are selling at a much higher level than what they were assessed at, then the state will drop the CLA to make up the difference in taxes with the idea being you have not assessed in some time, your properties are worth more than what they were assessed at value-wise, so we're going to drop your CLA so you're paying the difference. Am I making the sense there? Um, and so in Bethel was at 88.40, and Royalton was at 85.44, which gives us a homestead tax rate in Bethel of 1.4299, and in Royalton 1.4794. Okay, last year, Tara put your prior year's tax rate right underneath it, just so you guys could see it, and Bethel was 1.5089. In Royalton, it was 1.5612. That results in a reduction of tax um, in Bethel of um, almost eight cents, and in Royalton, eight cents. <clears throat> and what you'll see there is Tara broke down what the increase, uh, or it says still says increase because. Typically, that's what we're talking about, but it actually is a decrease uh, in the tax, in the per property value tax rate of $100,000, and $500,000 home. Yeah, I think it's a, it's a negative number. I think it's so. a good budget, budget season to put some money away. And uh, I'm with you. Yeah, put the uh, surplus away. And it away. can lessen the blow on. Future, future projects budgets. Um, or or help us towards this bond vote that we're putting together i think yeah. there's a lot of opportunity there i think i think everybody has been i mean granted that we all want low taxes i mean that's, <laughs> that's the goal right but but there's also you know this is an opportunity for us i, I think everybody if they like it or not has already started to plan for higher taxes based upon what the governor's saying and 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 uh you know i think this is a year where you know we could have a budget somewhat similar to last year with maybe a small growth and put some money aside. Um, you, you know, because I mean, right now we could probably put around $800,000 aside into a, a fund, um, to carry forward. And, and that would really change the tax rate at all. If I'm looking at it right. So, oh, you mean take like increase the budget to where the equalized tax rate is relative. Yeah. To offset it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, the way to do that, Chris, I see what you're saying, is we would increase our, con like, for example, you could increase your contribution to um, your capital reserve fund. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right now we're carrying 40000 You could bump that up. Because, I mean, we, we, you know, when we were talking about the infrastructure we have, I mean, there's, there's the bond that we'd like to put together, and the bond isn't just... I mean, a, a big part of it is the arts um, center that will have some donations towards it. But, you know, there's the security portion of the school. Um, there's the ventilation piece. And then there's the other pieces that we aren't considering right now that we need to do in the next, you know, three, four years, which is window replacements and, you know, all those non-flashy <laughs> things that uh, we don't necessarily want to spend money on but need to. So um, I think it's just a good opportunity. I mean, I think the key if, is going to be just helping people understand that and helping them understand um, how are my taxes staying flat and you guys are spending almost $2 million? 
Yeah. That, that's all, right? Like, we're just, yeah. we're going to have to have a lot of explaining. The good news is we vote from the floor, so you'd have that opportunity. But, um, it's really not that hard to explain, though, is it? I mean, to make them a... Well, I, mean, like I feel like we hear this <coughs> language a lot. I feel okay. like long-term weighted pupils. I just think mm -hmm. for someone who well, hasn't heard well, any of this... To hear all that, yeah. Do you know but, what I mean? Like, but I'm I thinking, think like, that it's, it's flat confusing. because we did, as an organization, we did really good in past years, and now this is the... Well, no, I mean, I think it's fairly easy to say the state changed the funding formula and because we have, you know, higher, uh, you know, lower income students numbers, we benefited. The key would be if we, you could, I would say to you, I you could increase it. I don't know if you're going to be able to increase it that much because they've put a cap on what you can before you have to go in front of a panel. Right. And so what that number is, Chris, is if you look at FY20, underneath this tax sheet here toward the bottom, mm -hmm. Tara's put it in TN, the, the percentage increase between FY24, pupil spending for long-term weighted average, can't go over 10%. If it okay, does, so could add, we could go right up to that 10. Right. And if, if so I don't it's know almost crazy were. for you as a district not to, we didn't come in with a budget so, doing that. Right. But it is almost crazy for you not to do that because um, for you, in the, I mean, you get less of a tax break, but otherwise there's no nothing you have to prove to anyone. If you go over 10%, we have to go in front of a panel and justify why. So you could add another 600000 and stand at the 10%. <clears throat> It's a lot of money. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I think there's opportunities. I mean, the same, one, I mean, we don't know there. with the new formula. I mean, there could be a knee-jerk reaction next year. I mean, when they start having to, you know, when the ed has to make some sort of adjustments based upon um, the communities that are under the 10 percent but, you know, capped at the 5, you know, there could be a, a change um, in that. Um, but I think it's, you know, it's an opportunity. I think everybody's thinking... I mean, right now, if, if things were level funded and you were, weren't getting an increase at the school, I think a lot of people would be very happy, especially knowing that you could put money aside. Now, you're going to have individuals that are going to have a hard time getting around. Well, the budget's going up. You know, let's say if we added that. The budget's going up $1.9 million. Like, you know, they just that would be tough to get through. But we're, we're also, a, our school's getting bigger. And, you know, and like you were talking about, more support. Um, you know, a third of that budget going up at that point would be money that we're putting aside for for down the road. Right. Um, and I think we could sell that. I mean, we don't know what down the road's going to look like, right? I mean, taxes could continue well, I mean, to go we, up. We do know what down the road's going to look like, and it's a right. large bond vote. And so right. that bond vote is much less, yeah. you know. Like, we can use this money not, like, 10 years down the road, but next year to make it right. so that our future budgets are only going up by you know, sure. yep. 50000 a year instead of 90000 a year. Yep. I mean, the truth is you could, I mean, depending, I mean, you could almost get in the place where you're, if we're fundraising, you could almost argue, are we even having to go to bond? Yeah, I mean, that'd be I'm nice. I'm saying we got reserves and stuff, right? Like, I don't know. Yes. I haven't run all those numbers, but. I think when we were looking at it. We still would yeah, be too. Like, we were. Looking at a bond of like one and a half million. Or That's what it was. I, I, I don't remember. Have to look. And, and this is a one one year influx of money, so right. it's yeah. not like we're carrying that on on the sheet for next year, you know. So. Well, that's what well, I'm saying. You're not yeah. doing personnel that are going to continue to be there. Right. You're. It's a one time investment. Well, yep. so I would say. You know, I do think it's worth looking at like providing support to our teachers and students, though. You know, I, I agree, like, putting some money aside would be great, but also, you know, I, like, if we added two extra paras, I think that that would make a, a big difference as far as, like, you know, I, I have heard from some teachers that, you know, could use extra support, you know, and, like, if we are able to do that and stay, you know, people are still getting a tax decrease, that would definitely be a worthwhile thing to do, so... It could be we're coming back with a little bit of both, and we got some options. Yeah, that's that's what I would argue for. Um, and you know, that's where you know I want to hear from the administration, like what would be most helpful as far as helping in the classroom with 
you know, I think there, there's been a, a lot of need in the classroom because of, you know, COVID and, and just general, you know, difficulties with things. And so, you know, what, what can we do to help support that? And I know the student support, adding the student support person is definitely going to help. But like, you know, extra paras or something like that. Tara, um, we had a couple questions and you weren't here. One of them was, and I, I don't know if I got this right or not, but underneath the, in the principal area, we had increased um, contracted services and other professional services. It's on page nine of 10. It was uh, 331 and 341. My wondering, uh, sorry, 341 and 349. Uh, my mine and Jeff's wondering was, was that to support some of the work we've been doing around contracted services for like high school dropout prevention and things of that nature? It was. That's correct, Jamie. Okay, great. And then the other question that came up was, um, Andrew wondered if we should move Tri-Valley Transit somewhere else for transportation and not underneath Tech Center transportation. Mostly because that line corresponds to the kind of the revenue line, the vocational transportation one. So keeping those somewhat equivalent would be nice. We can talk about where we want to put it. It's the right amount. It's at 33000 It's just a question about where to put it. Yeah. That makes more sense. And then there was a question about the long-term debt and what all made up that long-term debt. I did have a question... I know it was the gym, but are the lease payments in there too now? Yes. That's what I thought. So remember, we did a lease on the heating system, and that's mm -hmm. part of that too. Okay. Do you know when the gym payoff is? Give me one minute, and I'll pull the schedule. Okay. Just curious. Yeah, that was a question. Curious. I think it's 2029. And then a majority of the lease payments were supposed to be offset by savings. So are we showing those savings in the budget as well? You would have yeah. even this, well, you would have started showing them this year. But in this budget, though, yeah, okay, we just so there should it. be a, yeah. okay. So you've kept it in the budget, but we should see a savings. Is that what you're saying? No, no. We decreased the budget in those areas this current year. Okay. So the FY24 budget reflected those. Okay. Savings. And we just kept them. Like, we didn't add them back. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, and so we'll have to see what the actuals are for this year. For right. If we're, although, anyway. Well, I, I think, you know, this is definitely promising. Certainly, the, the way it all shook out with the taxes is very encouraging, and I like Chris's idea of putting aside some money towards the um, the building reserve fund. And um, yeah, I, I think we should look at what we can do to further support teachers and students. Tara, you got it? June of 2029. You got a home run there, Andrew. Mm. That's right. Well, I found that. I found it. That, so that'll be basically one hundred ninety thousand dollars coming off at that point. Correct. That's your principal payment. Yeah. Um, so if we do look to. Um, Increase taxes, but still lower them. Like what? Uh, what target should we go to? I guess is a question. Do we try and take the maximum amount to that ten percent cap, or um, and what that's will that do with taxes? That's, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. You can. I think even at the maximum, I did the numbers out quick. If you <clears throat> you could stay just under the ten percent if you added six hundred thousand dollars more to the building fund or whatever we call it and you you still would have um you still would have um some tax savings there um 
Oh, even after that, there'd be still be a savings? Yeah, because we can't, because according to Jamie, we can't go over 10%. So. <coughs> the difference, yep. <clears throat> um, you know, there would still be, if I got this right, math-wise, we'd still have a show about a two cent savings if we max that out. Sounds about right. That sounds like a pretty great idea. Yeah. When you present it like that, that sounds pretty good. We're, we're, we're going to be presenting savings and being able to put the money away. Sounds great. Yeah. And, and I think the more offsetting money that we can show towards that bond vote, the, the better position we're going to be in as well. Yeah. You know. Well, you said when we explained to people, I think having to offset that bond vote is going to make people a lot happier when we can offset that bond vote at that time. Yeah, because we already have, have the money. Yeah, because we already have monies in the fund. Plus, yeah. you know, we could use some of this. Plus, we have you know potential grants and and the um, the donations that we have. So there's, there's quite a bit of money we're going to be able to offset that with. And then you're only looking at carrying the gym another couple of years, and that comes off, right? So yeah. I think you're we're in pretty good shape there. Yeah, I think it looks like. Five hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Five fifty. Yeah. And that would still be a decrease in the equalized rate of. Still be like two cents. Yeah. One and a half cents. Nice. <clears throat> That's not bad. I mean, I can't imagine that anybody outside this room believes that. I mean, I think everybody's thinking that taxes are going up. Of course. Considerably. Well, now that's the, and, and actually, that's some communities might be having that conversation oh. right now. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. 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 So I think I we're pretty fortunate having that conversation. I think we're pretty fortunate yes. that we have the opportunity. To it is crazy put some money how aside. one budget meeting can be very different than another. Sure. <laughs> we're just paying for the buses now. That's all. That's I'm, right. I'll take it. I'm, I'm okay with the way things yeah. shook out. Yeah. Um. So what do people think about um, putting money aside versus funding things for this upcoming year as far as staffing or whatever? Well, I do want to hear back from staff yeah, about, about, about the addition. You said pa possible paras or something. That might be, that might be a, a good idea. I'd like to hear more about that. Yeah. But I think you still have the opportunity, you know, even if you put this whatever five fifty away, right, and we cap that out, is it sounds like because we're not taking full advantage of what our revenues could be, that you know, if we do have that fifty or sixty um, total, that there's monies in there to yeah, be had so like next year that you could add a para right. as you got going if. Well, if, I, if you needed like to, or some can, more support, we can keep it long term without impacting the tax rate because we have that right space in the red yeah right. yeah i think you have i think you have some space in the budget if if you needed that and you could find the right per people right okay well um i feel like we've got a good direction okay uh what i would like to suggest is we're going to need to announce your tuitions before the next meeting <coughs> i need a special meeting right um well, I mean, before the, the 16th, right? I'd like to come back to you with a draft of what we just talked about. Like we have a special meeting before the 16th that does another look at the budget and you announce your tuitions. And then on the 16th, possibly we're ready to adopt. Just your next meeting's pretty late. Okay. Am I making sense to what, what I'm trying to say? Yeah, so you're saying have a special meeting Sorry, one more time. Before the 16th, your next right. regular mi meeting. I yeah. don't believe it's till the 16th, Tara. Is that accurate? Right. Yeah. I think we need a special right. meeting just to do budget, another look at all this, and to a do your announced tuition for next year. We need to announce your tuition before what, January 15th? Correct. So that we can dial in this budget like one more time so that in the 16th, we're possibly coming to you with warnings and stuff. Am I making sense? Just because sure. yeah. your January meetings fall in late in January. I'm just yeah, it's as early in January as it can be, actually. Is it? Yeah, the 16th. Yeah, like. Well, we yeah, have where the cycle works, but. Yeah, just the way it is. 
Um, okay. Well, we don't have to decide that now, but I'm just yeah, suggesting we can, we can it. Talk about it then. Okay. No, that sounds fine. I was gonna say, like in the past, you kind of base the um, the tuition rate on the per pupil spending, but now the per pupil spending is kind of a. You know, it's, Tara, it's, they're, yeah. they'll give us a calculation, right? Still. Oh, I have a whole workbook that I have to a complete new one? to determine what yeah. your announced tuition rate is. I don't know what it looks like now, but we'll find out. Okay. Issued by the Agency of Education. Sounds like fun. Um, okay. Uh, any further budget discussion anybody wants to do? Okay. Then we'll talk about one more Regan Marine later in the meeting. Although that might be now. It's coming up soon. Yeah. Um, we'll have public comment at this point. <coughs> Is there any public comment? I'd like to do one this public. Uh, I'd like to second what Jamie said and thank the teachers, the paras, the bus drivers, the road crews, and anyone else that had anything to do with getting my kids safely home the other day. I really do appreciate that. And when he mentioned it, it made me think I'd really like to thank everybody because Everything went swimmingly, and I never have to worry about my kids getting home, and that's a very nice thing to not have to sit there worried. So I just got a call and said they'll be home by 11.30, and then everybody was home at 11.30. Love it. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Sam. Um, okay, so then we'd be on to an executive session. The only thing you may want to just um, maybe use it. The, the information I gave you earlier, Jamie. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just making sure that if anybody is going to run. Monday the 29th. If anybody's oh, yeah. going to run for the open board positions that you have to have, well, both. You, you, so you have to go see Pam Brown because um, she's the acting um, clerk. Um, and uh, so you have to do your consent candidate form as well as your signatures. Um, by by the 29th, so that's that's oh, the cutoff. January. January. Yeah, January. January. Yep. January. It's January. six Mondays prior to. Yeah. And who's up again? It's you, Peggy. Peggy and and then my seat. Yep. Okay. So, who do they see if they're going for Peggy's seat? Uh, Carmen. Carmen. Yeah, down in. Yeah, she'll get it to Pam. Yep. Right. <clears throat> And Peggy, you do. Peggy, you do plan to run again. Unless somebody can really talk me out of it, which wouldn't be that hard. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, I'm willing to run again. And Chris, you said you were strongly thinking about it too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, still thinking about it. Was there somebody else who? Tara, uh, you you said something. Did we already? I'm not sure where you're at in your agenda exactly, but did we already skip over the discussion item for the capital reserve? Discussion I don't think for the she, capital reserve. I don't think she ever put it on when you asked her. Oh. Yeah, we don't know about the discussion item for the capital reserve. It's under action. It's under eight point two. It is on. Okay. There. No, oh. so do that. Yep. Yeah, we skipped that. Sorry about that. Sorry. But you know, the, this is what you guys had already approved for us to use for fund balance toward the summer work. Um, but Tara will read it. We have to ask you for the actual money before we take it out. Okay. okay. So I need the board to approve, if it's their desire, $181,000. To pay the current balance through November 30th, 2023, to EEI. I'd like the motion that it be approved as Tara wrote it, uh, read it in exactly. I'll second it. Is there any discussion? Okay, all in favor? Well, let's do a roll call vote. Um, Aye. So, Ed. Aye. Chris. Aye. Aye. Okay. It's uh, approved.
Good catch, Tara. It got mixed in with the policies. Yeah. Thank you. All right, thanks, Tara. Um, do we want to schedule the... Yeah, let's do that before we go into executive. Yeah. So... Tara, did we get a special meeting schedule with Sharon tonight, too? Do you know what, when that was, just so when we go yeah, to look? Yeah, we are doing it January 9th at 5.30. Okay. Do you want to do the, the 9th is the Tuesday before our regular meeting. That'd be great if folks wanted to do it at 7. I had to just piggyback again. Works sure. for me. Can we, can we, um, can we do it here? I'm fine with that. No. Oh, I, doesn't matter yeah. to me. I have, One a, or the I have other. a game here until 6.30. So should be done by then. Can what night is the next Tuesday. 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 Great. Okay. That's great, Tara. They grabbed that Tuesday that was open. Great. Does yeah. that work for you, Peggy? Ninth. Tuesday the ninth, seven. You're muted. I'm trying to read lips. You know she's muted still? Mm -hmm. No, she's not talking. Oh, what, what was the question? I missed it. Sorry. Oh. Uh, are you available Tuesday the 9th on, at 7 p.m.? As far as I know. Okay. Well, let's plan that then. The executive session on um, contracts needs Jeff and Tara, and I, I can come too. But okay, yeah. um, I'd entertain a motion to enter executive session to um, discuss contracts. As to do so in public session would put the board at a disadvantage. So, requesting Jeff and Tara and Jamie. So moved. Thank you, everybody else. We'll see you on January 9th, maybe.